Do you want to make wonderful pumpkins and Halloween scenes? Well, this is the tutorial for you. Welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm going to show you how you can make this wonderful pumpkin scene here fairly easily and quickly. This is meant as a beginner's tutorial, but not for complete beginners. So some understanding of the interface is necessary. I will be doing another episode where we do a detailed pumpkin by sculpting, and we'll be using the pumpkins we make here as a base mesh. Also look out for my Halloween competition coming up soon. We've actually got some sponsorship, so there'll be a nice prize. So do look out for that one and be ready to do some pumpkin carving. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and the links in the description for more great content. So how do we make a pumpkin in the simplest way possible? Well, it's easiest to start with a UV sphere. So I'll delete the default cube, shift A to add. You can also find the add menu up here, a mesh, and then UV sphere. Now it'd be helpful to use a mirror modifier. So we only have to shape and model one side. You can apply it later on and then add some variation but it's certainly much faster to use a mirror modifier to start off with. The best way to do this is with the auto mirror add-on. So go up to edit, preferences, choose add-ons and type in auto and auto mirror should appear there. Make sure that's ticked and then you can close this down and it should be enabled. If I press N now and go to edit, I've got the auto mirror option there. I want it in the X axis and I want it positive. So this side, the positive side will stay, the negative side will be deleted and a mirror modifier will be created with clipping enabled. So press auto mirror, looks like nothing's happened. Go to my modifiers and there's my mirror in the X axis with clipping enabled. If I press tab to go into edit mode now, you can see that half my shape has been cut and mirrored. If you have any problems with the mirror, it may mean that your object origin this yellow dot here is not in the middle because that's where it mirrors around. Okay, let's now shape our pumpkin. So if I select the top vertex here and go to proportional editing, the shortcut for that is O by the way. And now if I press G to grab, I've got a circle of influence. So it affects the vertices around it and I can pull that down maybe to somewhere around there. I can change the circle with the wheel, but interestingly, the default seems to work the best, probably around about there, G again, bring my circle of influence in now, and then bring it down, and then we create that sort of dent at the top, somewhere around there. And at the bottom, G then Z, bring my circle of influence up a little bit, somewhere around here. And if we look roughly from front view here, we possibly want a little bit more bulbous at the bottom than at the top, but it's looking pretty good. Might just grab this one down a little bit more, press Z, then it will constrain to the Z axis. So it's quite squashed there, but I think that looks about right. I'll press tab to go back into object mode to move it above the floor. So one to go to front view, G then Z to move it in the Z axis above the floor level there. That looks good. Okay, so how do we get the pumpkin carving going? Well, once again, into front view and let's zoom in and into edit mode with tab. Now I can get my knife tool, K for knife. So we're literally pumpkin carving. Now with the knife tool, you can see that it snaps to vertices and edges. And when you hit a vertex, it actually has a red outline. That's because it favors going onto a vertex. Then slightly less preferable, but still okay, is an edge. And then less desirable still is just creating a cut in the middle of a face. It will do all these, but if you want less glitches, try and stick to edges and vertices wherever possible. If not, then just go in the middle of the face and hopefully you'll be okay. We left click to start our cut. So I'll left click on that vertex there, come down to this edge and down to about here, up into the middle of the face. Yes, I know I said don't do that, but I want to show you that it is okay. Maybe down to here and here, and you can actually go through an edge and it will just create a cut for you like this, and then maybe back down like this. And I'm creating a sort of zigzag mouth. Okay, so somewhere around there and I can press enter and I've got the lower jaw of my mouth. I can press K for knife tool again to do the top part. I might have a really high smile like this, sort of Joker-esque, and then come down to here with some spiky kind of teeth. All the time, just left clicking to create a new point and enter to complete the cut. So we can see this cut around here. Now I want to delete the faces that are in the middle. So let's go to face mode with three on my keyboard or face mode up here. Alt A to deselect any faces. I find the easiest way for this is circle select. You can, of course, just go around selecting the faces by holding down shift. But if you press C for circle select, I can change the circle with my wheel again, and I can actually kind of paint in the faces with left clicking. If you accidentally get some, you can middle click to delete any faces. And I just think that's an easier way of finding your faces. And I'm holding down the left mouse button to paint. 
and middle mouse button to get rid of any. Then right click to come out of circle select and I've got them all selected there. I can then press delete and then faces. And I've got a zigzaggy smiley face. Okay, so the same for the eyes. I'll go to front view, zoom in a bit. And a quick challenge to you is to make the eyes yourself. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you remembered, it's K for the knife tool, probably somewhere around here, and an eye coming down somewhere like this, and sort of teardrop type eye, I think. You can adapt these shapes afterwards, so I'll press enter there, see what that looks like. It's not too bad, but let's go back to front view, and I can go in to vertex mode with one, and maybe adapt some of these, this one might be out, and I can press G to move that up. Oh, I've got Proportional edit on still, so undo that. O for the shortcut to turn off proportional edit and G to grab, and then I can just sort of move those up manually with G to grab. Maybe this one down slightly. Just be aware you are changing the shape slightly there. It won't matter too much, but it's a bit more of an evil eye then. I can press GG to edge slide, so I can slide those up. So that's G twice to edge slide. I want him to look a bit more menacing, so I might actually create just another cut in here. So I can go to the knife tool and K for knife and cut across there and press enter. Then I can press GG to slide this one down and GG to slide this one across. And that's a bit more menacing. This one I can slide back, GG. And you can see it keeps the shape a bit better. Just be careful if I want to get rid of this one, let's say, and press GG to slide it towards the other one. There are actually two vertices there still. So if I press GG again and slide it back, it hasn't got rid of it. If you want to merge the vertices together, you can tick this button up here, auto merge vertices, and then GG, slide it across. And now when I press G, you can see they're joined together. Okay, so let's delete some faces. Three to go to face mode, C to circle select, and I can paint these faces. And middle mouse button to get rid of those ones. Right click to come out of circle select, and delete faces. And there we go. I think maybe a nose. So. K for knife tool, you don't have to be in front view for this, I'll just come up to here. And again, I've started on an edge, but I've gone into the middle of my shape here, and that's okay. But I would recommend definitely starting at least on an edge, ideally a vertex. And press enter to finish that. Three to go to face mode, select these two, and delete faces. Actually, that looks really wide, so I'll undo that, because that's hopeless. Let's come to front view, so I'm a bit more aligned. K for knife tool into here instead we better and to face mode delete faces is that better i still don't like it actually what i'm going to do i'm going to come in the middle here k for knife tool and just create a square like this and delete those faces let's try that i think that's better okay so we've got our pumpkin shape we've cut out a face the next thing to do is to apply a solidify modifier so we can give the pumpkin skin some thickness so add modifier come down to solidify and you can see it there I can up the thickness here making it nice and thick maybe somewhere around there I think okay so into object mode take a quick look marvel at your creation and be very proud of yourself okay we want a stalk so I can shift right click here to move my 3d cursor shift a to add mesh and then cylinder let's scale this down and move it into position I'll go to front view for that probably around about there G to grab and move it on top of my pumpkin. And I'll zoom in on that with period key on my numpad. It's a bit too far up, so G to grab and move that down. Now the stalks are often sort of very ribbed. So if I go into edit mode and into edge mode and select every other, let's say four like this. Then let's go to top view with seven on my numpad, scale them in, but press shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z axis. And I've got those sort of ridges. It's not quite working though that, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to turn proportional edit on so it will actually take these ones next to it slightly as well. So scale, shift Z, and bring down my circle of influence right down to somewhere around here. And you can see it sort of creates a bit more of a curve then. And I think that's a bit better. So it's not looking too bad. I think the top needs to scale in a bit. So three to go to face mode and scale the top a bit. And it probably needs a bit of a curve. So maybe control R to do a loop cut around the middle. Use my wheel to create two. Left click will apply them and ask where you want them. You can just double left click and they'll stay in the same position. Then I can scale Shift Z to kind of create a curve. And again, not scale in the Z axis. That's not looking too bad. I might select the top face now and maybe rotate it. 
I'll use my circle of influence to kind of create a bit more of a curve somewhere around there and G to grab I might scale it in a bit more as well there we go it's looking good let's just make sure that's in the middle so into object mode into top view and it's a little bit out so somewhere around there should be okay it's looking pretty good let's think about rendering so across the shading workspace I'll zoom in on my object I probably want a floor for them so shift A to add mesh and then plane scale that right up and alt G to remove any movement so it's now sitting on a floor okay so let's select our pumpkin first add a new material nice and simple just give it a nice orangey color somewhere around there and then the stalk new material give that a sort of dark green color so somewhere around there and bring the darkness down now it doesn't look great at the moment we need some lighting so shift right click to bring my 3d cursor inside my pumpkin shift a to add and light and then a point light so there's a single light inside there it's a bit on the edge at the moment so I'll just G to grab and move that into the middle of my pumpkin then if we click on rendering preview we can see the results with the lights if I zoom out just a touch you can see there's another light in the scene so we can make that one a lot less bright coming to our lighting settings here it's a thousand watts at the moment so let's change that to a hundred or something and give it a nice bluey light then it looks like the night it's sort of getting there let's bring that a little bit closer maybe some backlighting there that looks good and let's change the light that's inside our pumpkin so I'll click on that give it a nice yellowy light and put the power right up to something like 400 it's a very powerful candle that one and we can see it's starting to look pretty fun I think a dark floor would be better so I'll click on the floor new material and change the base color to black oh yes we're starting to get somewhere now now we can add some effects by going across to the render tab the render properties here I think ambient occlusion always helps a bit with the shadows bit of bloom oh yes we're getting that fun glow screen space reflections will probably help on the floor there I think the floor though is a little bit too reflective so just a little bit less somewhere around there and we're looking pretty good let's scale that floor right up that's quite fun I think a little bit more experimentation with the lighting would be better so what I'm going to do is bring out this window here change this to my 3d viewport so I can set up some lights I always think three-point lighting works nicely I'll bring this one right to the back here and quite low so it's got that cool shadow coming out there shift D to duplicate and shift D to duplicate it's got three lights in my scene just bring that one in a little bit more and that one in a bit more there we go so three-point lighting you have your backlight your fill light and your key light point lights are okay but area lights are probably a little bit better so I'll come to my lighting tab here and an area light is kind of easier to control you can select this yellow dot and point it at your subject now it's probably a little bit powerful so 50 for the key light the fill light again let's have an area light pointed at my pumpkin and fill lights generally fill the space so we make them really big but much less powerful so maybe 20 so it's pretty dull that might put it up a little bit it does all depend on the size of your scene because this is dependent on how far away you are from your model this model must be about two meters big because that's the default so if you need to you might have to move in or move away or put the power up now the backlight it's really fun to create a powerful backlight so maybe 300 and you can see that sort of blue rim there which is quite fun and again we'll have an area light but let's make sure it's pointing at our object so R to rotate pointed at our object or I can just grab this yellow dot and move it into position and perhaps bring it down just a touch and then we've got this cool lighting here which is quite fun you could also change the color of these ones I think this one would look better with a bit more red and maybe this one with a little bit of green perhaps and it's looking kind of fun I think the background color being gray isn't particularly nice so let's go down to the bottom here change from object to world you could bring an HDRI in but I think just bringing it right down to black works really nicely now you don't have to work in EV you can go across to cycles and that gives a sort of more of a warmer glow but EV is much quicker to render now one more thing that you might want to do if I select on my pumpkin I'll go back to layout mode for this because it'll be easier to see I'll zoom in a touch we can see that it's got flat shading on we can go right click and shade smooth but you can see then that it creates very sort of smooth edges around here if I go back to render mode there it looks a bit blobby so there's a quick way to sort this out by going to object data properties under normals we can use auto smooth and that should take the sharp edges and make them sharp again and it's not doing such a bad job now lastly we might want to distort the features very slightly 
and create a bit of asymmetry. So across to the modifiers and we will need to apply our mirror in order to add some asymmetry. So control A to apply the mirror. Into edit mode, select a vertex and use the proportional edit. So G to grab, use that circle of influence and kind of distort the shape a bit. And I think that looks a bit better. I do feel like our stalk needs a little bit of work, so I'll go into edit mode there. So let's zoom in on that. Control B to bevel and create sort of a curve to the top there. And in fact, I'll go to edge mode, select these two as well and control B to bevel those to create a little bit more curve. I think that's a bit better. Right click, shade smooth. And let's distort it slightly. So grab this one, G to grab. This one, G to grab. It's got a little bit more distortion. Maybe this one, R to rotate, G to grab. And just mess it around a little bit. And this very top one here, scale it in. That's a bit better. So it's looking pretty fun as a pumpkin. I can easily copy and paste this. And we've got a pretty fun pumpkin scene there. It's a good idea to go in and maybe modify some of these things so they don't look so uniform. And there we have it. A fun pumpkin scene fairly quickly. So hopefully you enjoyed this. In the next episode, I'll talk about how we can sculpt this to make this look even better and more exciting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.